Good afternoon. Thank you so much to the Leadership College and the Medical Society for giving me this wonderful opportunity. So the, the climate of healthcare is changing rapidly, and with that comes an acute need for physician leaders. Uh, larger, complex organizations, multi-specialty groups are forming with Kaiser, Mayo Clinic, uh, Cleveland Clinic being uh, at the forefront. And there are a higher percentage of physicians that are employed by hospitals. In 2012, about 26% of physicians were employed by hospitals, and in 2015, that increased up to 38%, and that continues to rise. Uh, physicians prefer to be led by other physicians. Uh, they feel like physicians have walked in their shoes and, and can empathize with what the day-to-day -day life of a clinician is and, and would rather that they are leaders in their field. Um, and from a consumer perspective, having physicians in leadership positions shows that quality of care is valued over profits. Uh, the reimbursement structure, as we all know, is changing and shifting towards a value-based model. And who best than, to, uh, than physicians to make value-based decisions that take into account both costs and, uh, and quality? And so our project started with a, a simple survey. And so we had 325 providers um, in this provider alignment group that we sent out the survey to. 93% uh, completed the survey, and our question was, how can alignment among providers be improved to work towards the organization's mission of leading our community to outstanding health? And so uh, we found some common themes in people's responses, uh, improving attendance at meetings, uh, transparency, improving communication, having a liaison to provide new ideas and innovations developed by physicians, having service line directors, uh, having dialogues between administrators and providers, easier ways to be involved without major commitment, and input in decision making. And so we then provide a uh, uh, created a provider leadership and governance strategic initiative. So providers in various fields were asked to be a part of this focus group. Um, and in that, we had set some goals. So we wanted to identify what's needed to support development of physician leaders and what governance structure is important to most aligned physicians to improve the care of patients in our region. And so the following questions were proposed. What skills do clinicians need to be successful in leading colleagues and staff to initiate a project? And what format do we use to develop these skills? And finally, what assets or support will be helpful to effectively engage clinicians to lead change? So several A3s uh, were uh, completed, and we, we found uh, a few things. Here's, here's one of our completed A3s. And we found a few key issues. So lack of meaningful access to senior leaders, unclear channels of communication, and limited time to developing leadership skills during training. And so from that, we uh, developed some goals. And so we want to enable our clinical staff to facilitate changes needed to move from the fee-for-service to a value-based care system. Uh, we want to build self-awareness by examining personal strengths and weaknesses and then utilizing that information to explore strategies to bring our performance to the next level. We want to expand mindsets and strengths and skills to apply these tools to accelerate growth. Um, we want to embody a more strategic perspective and organizational view to better prepare for our future. Uh, we want to develop stronger networks to uh, harness uh, others' experiences, knowledge, and talent. And then finally, we want to drive growth and development within teams across the organization. And so with this information, we developed a Leadership for Healthcare Providers course. Um, the goals of this course is to develop providers within our organization who are recognized as future leaders through didactic and experiential learning. Um, with our hospital system, we want to foster dyad relationships with administrative and nursing leaders, and we want to be able to mentor young providers. And so when we look at the dyad model, it takes a physician and non-clinician uh, business leader uh, to share oversight over 
a certain service line. And it's designed to ensure both strong clinical and business expertise are at the top of that service line. In our original cohort, we're going to be including both clinician leaders and non-clinician leaders and forming these dyads as they go through the leadership course. And so they can foster that communication um, and relationship to be able to move their projects forward. So uh, there'll be monthly didactics and uh, they'll each focus on different topics, managing oneself, developing teams, effective communication, uh, conflict resolution, developing a high reliability clinical environment, understanding healthcare finance, uh, roundtable discussions with our hospital leaders, and quality improvement. Our program goals will be to uh, develop, uh, have personal development through social and educational activities. We hope to foster communication and trust within the dyads. Um, and then each dyad will identify a project in their specialty um, or maybe a demand in their clinical area and work on that through, through the, the year program. Uh, they'll have a provider mentor and a senior leader to provide feedback during the project. And at the end of the program, each dyad will present their projects and the winning team will have funding to resource said project. Um, our first cohort is tentatively scheduled to start in March of 2019 and through participant surveys, we'll be able to develop this program for the future. So our future directions, uh, obviously this is something that we're, we're just trying to start. Our uh, stroke program has a very strong dyad that they use to, to build up their program and we're trying to find ways to mimic that dyad in other departments. Uh, so we, we want to start to identify leadership candidates early and in this first cohort we hope to have uh, younger clinicians and non-clinician leaders step up and be able to be a part of these projects and help them uh, grow through assignments that are appropriate at their level. And finally, offer candid feedback and coaching uh, so that they can really build up to their full potential. So thank you so much, and a special thanks to uh, Dr. Pino and Dr. Brown for getting us involved in this project. Thank you.